Well, uh, my name is Filippo Benedetti. I'm working at the Global Soil Partnership, uh, coordinating the activities of the Global Soil Laboratory Network, uh, Glosolan. Uh, Glosolan organized this session, and the aim of Glosolan is to group soil laboratories worldwide um, and work together on several activities the harmonization of standards and protocols, organization of online trainings. Uh, activities on internal and external quality control, like proficiency tests, for instance. And Glosolan is structured in regional and national networks that are called RESOLAN, so Regional Soil Laboratory Networks, and National Soil Laboratory Networks. Glosolan, as you can see, is increasing a lot and uh, is almost reaching 800 uh, members um, from all over the world. Um, you can, and you can see in the bottom right corner of the screen uh, the different um, regional networks and uh, how people, uh, how, how many members we have from each, from each uh, regional networks. Um, we are organizing several online training sessions. Um, all information are reported on the capacity development webpage under the Glossom website. Uh, the page is under construction but all the, the content is updated. So there you can find all the information about all the trainings organized by Glossolan and its partners and its members. Um, this is an example on how the web page look like uh, before the webinar take place. So for instance, you can see the short description of the webinar and the, um, and the lecturer and um, the link to register. And after the training, uh, after the implementation of the training, so. In a, in a couple of days, uh, you will find all the material of uh, today's meeting. So this means the presentation that has been given, uh, the record, video recording of the training. And so you can uh, go through the training again if you want to uh, check again what was given. This is a list of the webinars that have been implemented so far by Glossolam. In the right, you can see that we implement as well some trainings on soil spectroscopy. While in the left side of the screen, you see um, all the other trainings that have been implemented so far in different languages. And many of them will take place soon. So you can see we implement one on soil phosphorus by Olsen, one training on health and safety. Um, and the uh, other training session will take place in English as well as in French and Arabic. Today's session is the webinar on saturated soil paste extract and it is taking place, is implemented in English. Um, still, please uh, note that uh, in 10 days, around 10 days on the 21st of November, the same session will be implemented in Arabic. So if you are more familiar with Arabic, uh, please um, feel free to join again the session on the 21st of November, uh, that the training session in Arabic will take place on that day. Um, upcoming uh, webinars are, will be focused on the SOP for soil organic carbon by Wakelin Black, the phosphorus the determination of soil phosphorus by Olsen, the preparation of soil samples for chemical and physical analysis, both in English and French, and uh, uh, another webinar, webinar on the um, soil electrical conductivity in water with the ratio one to five. Uh, all this information will be reported on our website and we will inform all Glossolan members about this information. So uh, we will send you information by mail to register and so. Today's lecture is uh, on saturated soil paste extract and the lecturers of today are Marija Romic from the Faculty of Agriculture um, from Croatia, from Zagreb. Then we have Riam Zalan from uh, the General Commission for Scientific Agricultural Research in Syria and Mr. Mohamed Manal Al-Zubi from the Natural Resource Research Administration in Syria. We are very happy that we succeed in organizing this training and I want to thank once again the lecturers of today because this is the voluntary work and they cooperate together. You see they are from different parts of the world. They cooperate together to implement this training. It's very important uh, because this measurement uh, is, is one, of the, one of the essential um, procedures implemented by laboratories. And also because uh, the Global Soil Partnership, the Global Soil Partnership is uh, working a lot on soil salinity this year. Uh, as you may know, we implement a, a global symposium on salt affected soil in October. And the mm. main topic of the World Soil Day uh, 2021 will be um, health soil salinization to boost soil productivity. 
So this training is strongly linked with the, this training. And we are very happy that many, many people are attending today because soil laboratories, of course, are playing a crucial role in determining, in determining uh, soil salinity for mapping and for decision making to promote sustainable soil management to um, currently manage uh, salt affected soils. So without any further ado, I would like to give the floor um, to Maria uh, to start the, uh, the training. Again, uh, I kindly ask you to write all your question in the chat and okay. please specify to who you would like to address the question. We will try to answer the question throughout the, the, the presentation. Still, in the end of the presentation, we will have enough time to answer the question. So if you want to raise questions directly to the lecturers, you will be able to do this at the end of the presentation. So, uh, Maria, yes, we can see your screen, but not the presentation. We see the folder. Can you mute also? Yeah, okay, now we can hear you. Okay, now we see the presentation. Okay, just a second. <clears throat> can you see the uh, presentation yeah. now? Yes, the moment is loading. Yes, perfect. Please go ahead. Thanks a lot once okay. again. Okay. Thanks, Del. So we can start? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So first of all, warm welcome everyone to the webinar that will present the standard operating procedure for saturated soil paste extract published by Glossolan in 2021. I'm really so happy and excited to see so many colleagues that are interested in this issue. And the lecturers will provide today an insight on the pro procedure describing each step of the measurement from sample preparation to quality assurance and control. And participants will have the chance to raise questions and directly interact with the speakers in the last part of the session or the end of the presentation. And language of this session is English. Saturated uh, soil pest extracts has been for decades a routine method used in assessment of the soil salinity. So many laboratories in countries faced with the problem of soil salinization and alkalization across the globe use this method. To be more precise, since 1954, the electrical conductivity of the saturated paste extract has been the pre preferred index for the soil salinity. Based on this value, management plans and remediation strategies were developed and widely used. My name is Maria Romic, and I'm a head of the analytical laboratory called MeliLab at the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Agriculture, which is accredited according to the international standard ICO 17025. But a great deal of this training is prepared by Dr. Riham Zalahan, and Dr. Manhal Alzubi from Syrian General Commission for Scientific Agricultural Research, and I greatly appreciate they, their contribution. The short video clip was produced in the Mali Lab in Zagreb. Here is the short presentation of the institutions involved in this training. Uh, at the University of Zagreb, uh, MeliLab is an environmental chemistry lab, which carry out several both routine and specific chemical and physical analysis focused in general on soil water relations. So you can see here the list of the analysis we are carried out. So soil physical analysis, soil chemical, water and plant material, and also some uh, other cells as well. Uh, I would kindly ask Dr. Manhal Alzubi to present um, the laboratories in uh, participating in this, in this training from Syria. Please, Dr. 
Azubi. Thank you, Naja. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, everybody. It's a pleasure to meet you in this uh, session. Uh, my institute, me and Dr. Iham, the General Commission for Scientific Agriculture Research, Administration of Natural Resources Research. Uh, in Syria, we have uh, now 10 uh, labs. Before Syrian crisis, we have 14 labs, but uh, the crisis destroyed, where in, this, in the crisis, we have destroyed most of them. Uh, now we rehabilitated uh, most of them. Uh, we have three labs uh, south of Syria, one north of Syria, two in the, at the coastal of Syria, and we have three at the middle of Syria. And we have one uh, uh, at the east in Syria. Most uh, all of them interest in soil physical analysis and chemical and water and plant and fertilizer analysis. Uh, uh, the nine of these labs uh, joined to the Glossolan, I think since two years. Uh, we have one, we prepared the last one uh, to join uh, the Glossolan. Uh, now, uh, uh, these 10 labs is very active. Now, after crisis, is very uh, active. Uh, these labs uh, produce uh, uh, services for, uh, for farmers. Uh, for uh, 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 analysis the soils and water and fertilizers for farmers and for uh, uh, research in our uh, institute. Thank you, Maja, and I will move to uh, you again. Okay, thank you very much. So we, we will continue with the training outline. Uh, what we are going to do today is the training on the performance of the saturated soil paste extract method when we deal with the soil salinity problem. SOP, uh, saturated paste, has been harmonized, as I already said, by Glossolan particip participating laboratories and published by FAO, FAO in 2021. So here is the outline of the today's training session. We will start with the introduction, giving some general, uh, general points on the soil, soil salinity and consequences of the rising uh, salts in soil, scope and field of application of the method, principles of this method, so uh, the way to prepare sample and uh, procedure is described, will be described, uh, which equipment, apparatus and material we used, then how to carry out the calculation, some uh, basic um, uh, information on quality assurance and quality control will be given also, uh, as well as health and cell, uh, safety issues. So we prepared a very short um, uh, video to, um, uh, to give time for a break to raise your questions or uh, prepare for the discussion. And uh, at the end, we will have some conclusions and um, info of the further analysis and, uh, and the discussion will be, uh, will be opened. So <clears throat> starting with the uh, uh, soil salinity, we can say that um, one of the most serious and persistent pro problem over the history of the agriculture in so many countries of the dry regions of the world where human civilization were, have risen has been salinity. So worldwide, soil salinization and alkalization have been identified as major threats to the quality and availability of the land resources. According to FAO sources, more than 800, 800 million hectares of land are salt affected. It's about 6% of the world's total land area and covering a range of soils defined as saline, saline sodic and sodic. Furthermore, Nearly 20% of 230 million, uh, million hectares of irrigated land are salinized is a certain degree. Salinity refers to the accumulation of salts in soil and tends to be a problem in dry climates where natural levels of rainfall cannot leach salts out of the soil. We also associate the salinization with poor drainage in irrigated land. Irrigation may import salts into soil 
And when drainage is poor, irrigation rises the water table, bringing salts into rhizosphere. These salts may come from parent material and rocks having an excess of sodium, calcium, magnesium, and other elements. Then irrigation with water rich in basic salts can lead toward the soil salinization. Topography may influence as well, such as uh, the absence of slope or presence of basin shaped topography, uh, followed by seawater intrusion that may uh, bring uh, salts into groundwater in the coastal areas, and many, many other conditions may contribute as well. So why it is important to measure electrical conductivity and monitor its value? Salinization severely limits crop growth, reduces yields, and causes plant stress. Therefore, soil salinity interpretation is essential to develop and apply sustainable agricultural management and suitable irrigation techniques in semi-arid and arid environments. Salinity is, as a definition, we can say then that salinity is a soil condition characterized by a high concentration of soluble salts generally defined as one in which the electrical conductivity of saturated soil paste extract in the root zone exceeds four decisiemens per meter and 25 uh, uh, Celsius degrees. So the soluble salts of greatest concern uh, in soils are sulfates, bicarbonates and chlorides of the basis of calcium, magnesium and sodium. In saline soils, salts cause several uh, uh, problem conditions and uh, I already mentioned before. Primarily among these are osmotic effects. In a non-saline soil, about half of, uh, of the water held at the field capacity is available to plants. In saline soil, as little as 10% may be available because of osmotic potential. Furthermore, Specific ions, mainly chlorine and sodium, may be taken up by plant roots and accumulate in plant tissue to toxic levels. These are called ion specific effects. Furthermore, nutrient imbalances in the plant can result from excess of some ions at the ex uh, expense of others. For instance, high level of sodium can induce potassium or calcium deficiency, or high soil salt level inhibit population of some soil microorganisms uh, while encouraging others changing the biological nature of the soil. In certain cases, extremely high pH occurs as well. And now, What's the main purpose of applying this method? So I will repeat maybe some uh, issues, but it, um, it is important to stress that soil saturated by extract electrical conductivity value is widely used measure of soluble salts to evaluate the salinity hazard of crop, crop growth and the sodicity hazard to soil permeability. This is actually a simple and accurate manual method, but requires a trained technician to ensure the proper amount of water is added. The method requires a larger amount of soil sample compared to the other chemical soil analysis, and the procedure takes over 24 hours, it's a pretty long time. Soil texture is a parameter that greatly influences the performance of this soil testing method and consequently also the result. We will discuss uh, this problem later. Over a wide soil textural range, the saturation percentage is approximately twice the field capacity uh, soil water potential 
and is four times the permanent melting point soil water potential for soils of loam to, lo uh, to claim loam texture then can be different for the different, uh, different soils and soils of different properties, especially on te textural properties. So which were the starting points for this presentation? Then uh, uh, we established that this soil water ratio is used because it is the lowest re reproducible ratio for which enough extract or analysis can be readily removed from the soil with common laboratory equipment, such as pressure or vacuum. Then this ratio is often related in a predictable manner to the field soil water content, which is very, which is very important. Soil solution obtained at lower soil moisture conditions are more labor intensive and require special equipment. And finally, this extract is used in a series of chemical analysis, primarily to measure electrical conductivity and concentration of major solutes. So we come now to the scope and the field of application. And saturated paste extract is defined as the standard method for determining determina, determina the amount of, excuse me, salt in soil. The saturated paste is actually a particular mixture of soil and water. And when preparing a saturated paste, an aqueous extract is obtained. That's our actually our goal to obtain this extract. The extract is used in a series of chemical analysis. I already said electrical conductivity, concentration of major solutes like uh, sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and many others. Furthermore, saturated paste extract is used also to estimate other important parameters, such as sodium absorption ratio, which also predicts the exchangeable uh, sodium percentage. So we come now to the main goal of, um, uh, of this um, uh, SOP and also this, uh, uh, this presentation or this training, that the main aim of this SOP is preparing saturated soil paste for measuring electrical conductivity and soluble sun, salts of a soil from a saturated paste extract. So far, uh, up to now, the, uh, my colleagues from uh, Syria will take, um, uh, take the floor and describe the, the procedures and all other details on the, uh, on the SOP. And I kindly ask the Dr. Manhal Zubi to continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Maja. Thank you. Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, I will talk uh, about principles. Uh, there are three principles to uh, prepare the saturated paste. The first is the time. Uh, you need to do this process uh, within specific uh, time, not exceeding 24 hours. Uh, the second, uh, make Sorry, sure Manal, Can you put uh, the presentation mode, the full screen mode, so we can better see? Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the the, the, the uh, second, uh, make sure that you will uh, use mechanical vacuum uh, extractor. So by using uh, suitable uh, tools, you can achieve this step. Uh, the third, determine the EC electric, uh, electrical uh, conductivity. It's so important step to measure the soil EC. So you can uh, determine the soil salinity. Uh, the AC expressed uh, in this is meter per meter. Some countries expressed it in millimoles. Uh, yeah, millimoles, but uh, most countries now express it in this is uh, Make sure you choose a, a, a good kind of AC apparatus uh, to achieve uh, good uh, results. 
for preparation of the saturated based, uh, how we can prepare saturated based and what we need. Now uh, we need some equipments and materials, but uh, you should divide it, uh, this issue into two parts. Uh, the first for preparation, uh, the saturated paste. Uh, 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 we need equipments, we need materials uh, like balance, redouble, and a crate to 0.1 gram, bakers, ceramic dishes, uh, septiola, and vacuum pump. Uh, the second, uh, we need uh, for do this uh, process, uh, uh, we need to uh, get a soil extract from uh, uh, saturated paste. Uh, by using uh, some tools like uh, filter papers, but make sure the number 42 or 45 and the receiving tube and uh, measuring cylinder. The equipment, we need these equipment. We need glass, we need the septula and measuring cylinder. And uh, it's very important uh, material that's filter papers, make sure to be 42, 44. Also, the uh, equipment we we need the vacuum pump. A vacuum pump it's essential equipment to get the soil extract. Also, flux uh, you need them to get the extract after uh, the, the previous step, the vacuum process. Uh, uh, for the more, uh, don't forget the roofer stopper in order to achieve a good vacuum process. Also, you need receiving uh, the tube. Uh, receiving tube to collect the soil extract. So we need this apparatus within this equipment. It's very important in uh, this process. As I mentioned, vacuum, uh, mechanical vacuum, and uh, cups for extractor and for receiving tube. Now, uh, the soil sample, uh, when you receive the soil samples, you should prepare these samples for analysis as the following. Uh, firstly, firstly, collecting sample, uh, when you collect the samples from the field, either from farmer fields or research fields, you, you should write the sample data in small paper, such the size, uh, the kind of uh, sample, maybe uh, soil sample, maybe, maybe water sample, the number of sample and the depth of this sample and the coordinates uh, and the height of this land uh, we, we, we should write this information uh, in a small piece of paper. And after that, uh, drying the sample, after sending the sample to lab, dry them directly as air, air dried. Uh, make sure to, to keep them away from the sunlight. Uh, after that, uh, uh, make sure you green this and sieve the, the, the soil sample through two millimeter sieve and store them, store the, the samples uh, into a bottle, maybe a glass bottle, paper boxes, or plastic uh, bottles, it's up to you. You, you. you can choose the best for you. Also, what we need now uh, for this pr uh, procedures, uh, distilled water, it should have an EC 0.001 DC Siemens. Uh, for this process, uh, and uh, don't um, uh, be, be, make sure uh, your uh, the equipment the the, uh, the the equipment is very clean and uh, and washed by distilled water, uh, and save the samples uh, in store glasses box, and don't don't forget to write the numbers. Don't forget to write uh, the, the numbers of the samples in the bottles uh, and also don't forget to put the small piece of paper into the, uh, the bottles of samples to keep the information to keep the data and don't forget to record this all information uh, in the register or personal computer so to, this, to, save, uh, to save this data for the future works. Now I will move to my colleague Reham. Reham, are you ready? Yes. Is the, my voice clear today? So very clear. Yes. Um, you can finish your uh, your presentation, and I will start to share my screen, Dr. Mana. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yes, I will. You can share your screen now. 
Yes. I just want to put it in the yes, it now. Yes, yes, we can Is see. Is it clear? Perf yeah, yes, yes. perfect. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, good morning, uh, good evening, and good day, our colleagues. It's a great um, a chance that uh, FAO and GSP give us the, this uh, great platform to share experience and information um, with our colleagues all over the world about soil science and lab working. Uh, I will start from the point that Dr. Menhal stopped in. Um, after getting our soil samples in the lab, actually it's very important to get adequate information about the soil sample we are working on. So uh, for me, I prefer, for example, to get the results of the uh, mechanical analysis before uh, starting the procedure of um, conducting the saturated waste because it's uh, going to give me a great idea and adequate information about what kind of soil samples I'm working on. So, uh, for example, uh, if you can see the table uh, on this on this slide, you can see how um, the soil samples may differ according to soil type and according to soil depth without the same soil profile. Uh, if you can see from the table uh, on the uh, left, that the group of the very fine uh, soil particles uh, can differ from 33% uh, increase to uh, 50% with the depth of 75 centimeters and then have that sharp decline till 7%, only 7% at the uh, 100 centimeters. So it's very important to get an adequate information because that's gonna help me first to know what kind of soil I'm working on. So what, uh, is the, the, the soil mass that I need to, to work on. For example, with soils with high clay content, I may rise it from 200 grams till 400 grams. It will be more adequate and more uh, beneficial. And, and the more high the soil has, the more water it might take to, to get the saturation uh, condition. So it's gonna give, help me um, uh, to, to know uh, what to do and how to do. Of course, it's uh, very important to uh, give me an idea about the precision of my results. If I'm, uh, if I'm going to conduct the, the further analysis, uh, if we can see from uh, the same table on the right, how different the soil properties uh, with this, with the, the different of the uh, particle size groups, for, for example, from CEC to magnesium, calcium, whatever I want to, to measure, it will differ uh, according to the soil sample type uh, as well as the soil sample depth. So it's very important to know what kind of soil samples I'm working on. Uh, here is an uh, ideal example about different types of uh, soil based saturation, uh, saturation based of different soils. We can see that might differ uh, in appearance, in color, in shape. So uh, if you are uh, dealing with some kind of soil types in your lab and you will see a different uh, pictures in this training, it's okay. Uh, it might differ according to the soil type, to the soil content of organic matter, as we can see from the pictures on the left and on the right, and um, the, the, the content of sand, the, the content of clay, so it's okay. Uh, just uh, keep working, do at mu as much as you, you can, because with practice, with repeating the situation, you will have that, um, that sense and that feeling of the, the, the procedure itself, and so you can judge your work um, by time uh, more accurate and in an excellent way. Uh, so after uh, we um, uh, we, should, we make sure that we have all the equipments we need because as the uh, professor mentioned at the first uh, of this presentation that it's a procedure, it's a time consuming procedure. So make sure that you have all the equipments you need. You will not need anything in the further steps. Uh, start with the precise uh, balance weight to, to have a 200 gram of your um, uh, soil sample and air dried, homogenized, uh, saved by two millimeters safe uh, soil sample. 
and then uh, transfer the soil sample to uh, something uh, or sub, uh, some equipment to work in to, to conduct the, the, the soil saturated best in. We prefer the ceramic dishes or we can use the uh, pictures of 500 millimeter. Uh, the most important point here to use some equipment with that uh, wide open so you can uh, stir and mix easily and then you can uh, transfer the saturated base to the extractor system easily um with nothing remain in the in the dish itself so you can it's it would be more accurate uh, in this stage i prefer to to write down all the notes i might need uh, in the further cal calculations for example um i prefer to to weigh the the empty dish the dish with the dry sample as well as the the dish with the saturated base it can help me uh, in the further calculation i may need so a, an extra information, it's better than the missing data um, because it may uh, cost me to, to re-repeat to repeat the, the whole procedure and it's really difficult and time consuming and effort consuming actually. Uh, to start the procedure, uh, after uh, transferring the soil sample to the uh, ceramic dish, for example, we will start to add the dionized or the distal water, as we mentioned, with the materials we need. Uh, at this point, uh, I prefer to start the additions with small portions of water from the edges towards the center. Uh, we shouldn't pour the, the, the distal water on the top of the soil, start from the edges and start to mix small portions of water with a part of the soil gradually stirring and mixing. Uh, continues in this uh, case until all the dried uh, soil is moistened. After that, uh, you can um, keep mixing for a while. I prefer this actually because uh, we cannot give a, the chance to the added water to enter uh, in the pores between the soil particles and the soil aggregates, which is the main purpose and the main principle of this procedure. Actually, you can use uh, for this, as we mentioned before, the glass stereoscope. Hey, well uh, and keep, keep mixing uh, until uh, all the dry uh, soil is moistured. Uh, here, uh, there is a famous question, when to start, uh, when to stop adding the water. Actually, there are special uh, and uh, main characteristics of the ideal uh, saturated soil base. Uh, you can see from the picture that shiny surface it's a um, metallic cluster. Uh, it reflects light easily. So uh, you can see that shiny, smooth, and fine uh, surface. Uh, it um, flows slightly if you tip the container. And if you make that draw, uh, if you draw the, a line in the middle of the, of the soil base, it can uh, um, fill up or merge again if you only uh, gently tip the edges of the, of the dish. And we can see pictures in the previous, uh, in the in the further uh, slides for these characteristics. So I'm going to move for this because we will edit. it. After that, uh, it's perfect, but we need, it uh, didn't finish yet. So we need to, to allow that base to stand for a while, at least for two to three hours. And then we have to recheck the criteria of, the, of saturation. Actually, it's from practical note. Uh, if you conduct this uh, procedure for several times, you can notice that it may differ with soil, with soil type. For example, you may uh, have to recheck uh, samples of high clay of content while um, uh, you may uh, not add any water or, so, or, or soil uh, for um, soils with coarse texture, actually. And I also noticed from my work that may differ with the temperature of the lab uh, from seasons in hot summers or in dry uh, on, on winter, for example. Uh, in hot summers, uh, you may add um, some water after two to three hours. Because if you didn't cover the, the, the dish, you might lose some of it uh, by evaporation. So uh, it's very important to reach the, the, the criteria of the saturation of the base uh, after a while. And then you can leave it uh, till the next day, it allow the, the base to stand for at least 24 hours, at least, but not uh, exceeding uh, that time. It's um, at minimum four hours and at maximum uh, 24 hours. After that, we can uh, place uh, our saturated paste in the cups. 
and uh, move it to the mechanical extractor to uh, connect the strings with the connection tube and um, moving to the next stage. Uh, here I want to uh, take some notes from our work in the lab, actually. Uh, as Dr. Malhan mentioned that we have several sizes for Buchner funnels. Uh, you can choose what you can use whatever you have in your lab, but if you have all the sizes available, I prefer to choose the, the bigger size or the medium size because it's gonna give me a, a wider space, a bigger space to separate my uh, saturated base. So uh, it's gonna make the extraction process more easier and I can consume less time to get the, the soil extract. After that, I need to choose the, the right size of the filter paper. Uh, adding the filter paper, we use the filter paper as a barrier uh, to uh, prevent the soil particles from moving toward the soil extract because I want a, a clear soil extract to work in the further analysis. So uh, I'm going to add the filter paper. It's very important to moisturize the, the edges. Why I moisturize the edges? Because uh, of two reasons. First, um, in soils with the high clay content, I may have, uh, as we mentioned, a very a big mass of soil to get only a small uh, amount of soil extract. So I don't need to uh, lose any uh, portion of it because uh, the filtered paper may, may absorb a, a little bit, uh, as well as I want to moisturize the edges so I can uh, ensure that the, the complete sealing uh, on the edges, so no uh, possibility for any uh, soil particles to move toward the, the soil extract. It's very important, actually. And then I will connect the, the whole system, uh, connect it with the uh, extractor system. Uh, after that, I'm going to uh, go to uh, transfer my saturated base to the Buckner funnel. Uh, I have an ideal saturated base after rechecking it uh, the next day. Uh, I'm, um, I should make sure that it's uh, uh, very ideal and um, if I want to uh, adjust it or I need to mix it again, so it's going to give me uh, uh, something so similar to the picture we can see in number one. And then uh, I'll move it to the Buckner file. Uh, I separate the soil based on the filter paper. Uh, uh, that's why we need, uh, as we said before, a good size of the Buckner funnel. Uh, uh, the base should cover the bottom of the uh, of the cup completely at a depth of at least 1.3 centimeter. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to move uh, to uh, connect the, um, the flask with the extractor system and start the operation. Uh, after starting the operation, we will we can see the, the soil extract as it drops in the flats in the flask. And um, the, the most important question here, when to stop? Uh, do I need to stop after getting an enough uh, amount of the soil extract or I want to, uh, I should uh, finish the, the whole process till the last drop of soil extract? Actually, I prefer to, to, go, to obtain the uh, as much amount as uh, possible because it would be a more accurate and more homogenized, uh, more um, uh, representative to, to the soil uh, set, uh, to the soil sample I'm working on. Uh, we can judge the, the end of this process uh, by the appearance of the soil based after extraction. We can see that it's uh, it started to, to get drier because we are uh, extracting the, the moisture from it. And after a while, it may uh, uh, form some uh, kind of cracks on the uh, surface. After that uh, period, I can um, switch off the, the system and uh, get my extraction, my, my soil extract. After getting the soil extract and uh, save it in proper uh, containers, it may be polyethylene containers, I can go to the further analysis, which the, the, the aim and the point of conducting a saturation soil base. Why do I want to, to do such a procedure? Because I want this, a, a soil extract that um, as similar as to the one uh, exists uh, within the, the root system uh, in the soil profile. So I can uh, do several analysis actually. It's a great chance to um, first make the electrical conductivity by using the electrical conductivity meter. I can uh, also by immersing the probe of pH meter 
directly in the saturated base, I can uh, take uh, the, the BH uh, value. I also can uh, calculate the total uh, dissolved salts in my soil samples, the TDS, uh, the sour ratio. I also can use it as uh, the professor mentioned before for uh, measuring several uh, monovalent and dipolent in my soil samples. And we can see from the, uh, the picture how clear the soil extract that I can get from this procedure. This is the, the properties and the characteristics of the identical saturated soil base. We can see that it's the, 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 the shiny surface. It's a glisten and reflects light easily. It flows uh, slightly. If we can see that the thin uh, line was drawn in the middle of the saturated base, if I tip it or shake it gently, it will fill up again or merge. Uh, and it slides freely uh, and cleanly from the spatula. Of course, unless if, the, if my soil samples have a high clay a contact. After finishing, uh, I should make uh, some calculation, actually. Uh, saturated base give me the chance to, to do several calculations and several measurements, as we mentioned before. Uh, one of the most important things that I can conduct by using this saturated base is, the more, is calculating the moisture content. Uh, which indicates to the amount of water needed to saturate 100 gram of my soil. The saturation uh, usually uh, referred to uh, by millimeter uh, be 100 gram or gram by 100 gram, which we must indicate it. That's why we mentioned that we need to take several notes and weights uh, previously uh, by taking the, uh, the weight of the dish with the dry soil and then the dish with the saturated soil, I can measure uh, how much water I consumed to conduct the saturated base and can go to calculate all these measurements. And uh, there are also another way that I can use by uh, measuring the, the water before adding to the saturated base. Uh, uh, that's why we, we said that I might need a cylinder so I can uh, measure it this way or that way. It's the same. The most important that I get the accurate number of the consumed amount of water to conduct the, the saturated paste. After that, I can uh, apply this equation. It's very simple, very important to um, calculate the saturation. Uh, I just need the weight of water added per gram and the, uh, the weight of the soil per gram multiplied by 100. Actually, uh, if I want to calculate the, the saturation of a soil sample by using a, another method, it may take from me two to three days in the lab. And uh, it won't be accurate as much as this. So uh, we uh, in phase to uh, or induced our collectives uh, to take as much information and results from one method. So it will be a um, saving time and efforts and money. Uh, also, we can uh, use the different units to, to refer to the electrical conductivity, which is the main purpose of uh, conducting the saturated base. As we see from the table in the below, we can go from two several units. Actually, as uh, Dr. Manhan mentioned, we can use several minutes. Uh, some of us prefer to, to use a decibel per meter, which is um, highly and very common to use um, to refer the electrical conductivity of a soil. But I can still convert, uh, make con several conversions between units according to why uh, I'm conducting uh, this procedure and um, what do I want to, to do with, my, with the result and the number. For health and safety, actually, um, the most important thing, and I like it very much, and the all SOPs, GSP conducted, uh, that they refer to the health and safety of the procedure and the materials we used in, in this procedure. Actually, um, in general, no significant, uh, significant hazards are associated with, with this procedure. Uh, but uh, we prefer that the um, lab workers use the, the protection elements, uh, which vary and highly required uh, from lab coat to gloves to glasses. It's a preferred, even it's only soil and distilled water, but we prefer that our workers uh, still uh, keep protected as much as possible because actually several new studies have mentioned the possibility of getting infected 
uh, because of the direct the human skin contact with the soil. Uh, the soil may be a, come from polluted areas, from fields irrigated with fertilizers, with gray water, with sewage water, for example. So uh, we need to be more careful. We, um, it's better to, to wear the gloves, the lab coats, and the glasses is uh, to eliminate uh, the risks as much as possible. For quality assurance, quality control. Actually, uh, first of all, there are the basics of the of the lab work. For example, uh, you should make as precise as possible while weighing the, the soil samples. We need to uh, make sure that we are using the, the right ionized or distilled water. We need to recheck its pH and EC before before using it because it's it's a great factor that may change the whole result. And we need, uh, we need to make sure that we are using the reference materials for uh, adjusting uh, uh, our equipments, apparatus like the uh, electrical conductivity meter and the BH meter. And we need also to make sure uh, at what a uh, temperature we are working with. We can easily distinguish the, the temperature of our lab on the screen of this apparatus because uh, as we mentioned that electrical conductivity for example may increase at approximately a 1.9 percent for every increase of a degree in the temperature of the, uh, of the lab condition so we need to make sure that we are working uh, as accurate as possible and uh, if we see some uh, numbers of electrical conductivity and researches and references. They commonly use the reference temperature, which is um, known as 25 uh, uh, degrees centigrade, uh, unless that we need to mention uh, the temperature we worked on. Uh, we wanted to share with you some of the common mistakes we usually uh, see in uh, the labs while trying to, to train a new uh, lab workers on conducting this process. Because uh, if you wanted to, to make some soil extract, uh, soil solution is, is very uh, easy in compare with this procedure. Uh, for example, this is a very common mistake. After two hours and maybe after 24 hours, you cannot find this uh, amount of water on the surface of the soil base, which is a great mistake. So what may I do uh, if I uh, face some kind of this uh, mistakes? Uh, for example, uh, it's not preferred. Uh, it should be a, a not faced uh, after a while of working. Uh, we may add some extra soil to, to adjust the, the, the base to structure. But as we mentioned before, we need to weight the, the added uh, so, soil again, so we can measure the whole mass of soil we used. And we also um, may um, leave it for an extra time to, to, to give it time to, to settle that, to, to rest and to give me the, the accurate, uh, accurate um, maybe uh, concentration of uh, of cautions and whatever I want to, to measure with it. Uh, we can see also that um, why we say that we need to start from the edges till the center because we don't want to see this kind of mistakes on the left. For example, the um, splattered edges, the polluted edges, because I'm uh, going to lose an amount of the, of the soil uh, on that edges. So I can't uh, go to a, a complete transfer to the soil based to the Buckner funnel. Uh, it's not preferred and I'm gonna lose some of the um, of my soil samples. So my, my calculation won't be accurate as much as I want. Another mistake that forgetting the uh, record of consumed amount of water or forgetting uh, some necessary weight as we mentioned before. We need to be very careful because we don't want to repeat this uh, procedure once more. Also, we can see from the, the picture on the top, the, the very thick structure. We may uh, find the, this, um, this kind of conditions after two to three hours. That's why we need um, to, to recheck the, the criteria of saturation. Um, in the uh, picture, in the bottom, we can see a very small amount of soil. So uh, if I'm 
gonna do this kind of procedure. I make. I want to make sure that I'm doing it uh, as much accurate as possible, so I don't have to repeat it again. But if I use only two small amount of soil, it won't be enough to obtain an adequate soil extract to work uh, with and to conduct all the uh, analysis I wanted uh, after that. So uh, I should make. I'm sure of applying uh, the procedure as precise as possible. This is a very common mistake, actually, because uh, that's why we said we need to, to choose the right size of the filter paper, the kind of the, the type of the filter paper. As men, Dr. Manhattan mentioned, it uh, should be 42 or 45, uh, 45, yes. Uh, we need to make sure that we place it in a proper way so we can cover all the holes of the buccal funnel. Uh, as we said, that we use it as a barrier to prevent soil from going down to, uh, to the soil extract. So it's a very common mistake and the result will be like this. It's not a clear extract. Uh, so in this way, we need to, to repeat the filtration process and it will consume uh, time. Uh, it's very cost because I'm going to need an extra paper, uh, infiltration paper. So I, I don't need to get at this point. I just uh, make sure that I use the right type, I place it in the proper position, and then I'm going to get a clear extract. Uh, we are going to show uh, a small video about the whole process uh, that can uh, conclude the, uh, all the steps we talked about. So enjoy it, and we are going to finish the, uh, the training after this with Dr. Mana. Yes, uh, Dr. Mahal, the conclusion is yours.
I cannot continue presenting it. And Dr. Manhan, you are muted. Yeah, okay. What we conclude now, the saturation extracts, uh, the traditional used uh, methods, it's known in the world. Uh, by this method, uh, we get extract. This extract, you can uh, determine many tests like EC, cations, and anions, uh, and you can measure the SARP and the ESP. Uh, the soil, uh, the, the soil uh, based extract it is that helps identify what is happening in the soil. Uh, it's a good tool for determining what nutrients uh, are soluble in the soil solution, including a high sodium or salt levels. It's also very effective in identifying solubility of calcium. Uh, and it can be great importance in helping understanding what nutrients are soluble in the soil, leading to uh, better recommendations. However, uh, this technique uh, is uh, non-specific, which means that it's unable to distinguish between different types of ions. And easy testing is a reliable way to access how salts are affecting the plant uh, growth. Uh, the AC of soil uh, or water is influ influenced by the concentration and composition of dissolved salts. So a high AC value indicates a high salinity level. Uh, what we can determine by this method, uh, we determine EC, uh, method, soluble ion, concentration of soil water, uh, extracts, uh, TDS, and TDI. And thank you for your interest. Thank you for your attending this training. Thank you for your time. Now I will move to my colleague, Filippo, to go on uh, question and discussion. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Manhal. Thanks, Riham. Thanks, Maya. Thanks for three guest speakers of today. Again, it's a really nice example on how this network can connect experts from different labs, from different countries, but also from different regions and cooperate together to share their knowledge to the other peers. So thanks you once again for your availability. A special thanks also for to the colleagues uh, at uh, Zagreb University for making uh, the video that you just show, uh, you just uh, you just saw. Uh, we will uh, edit this video a little bit, and we will make it available online very soon. Uh, once again, the presentation of today, as well the video recording of this training, will be uh, published on the Gluson website very soon. Uh, now we have some time to answer the questions. Uh, you can, I can ask participants to um, kind uh, to, to write the questions in the chat or to raise your hand. We can give you the floor. This is a really a unique opportunity that you have three experts on the topic here for you to really to answer your questions. I see there are some inputs uh, from the chat that have been already answered by the trainers. Um, Sam is asking for the reference. Uh, well, this SOP, this training is based on the SOP that have been um, harmonized by Glossolan. This is available online, this document, and within the document, the last um, part is about, you can see all the, um, Reference. I'm just copying now, pasting the, the link in the chat. So you, if you open the document, you will see, maybe I can show you a little bit. Let me share my screen. I can show you the, um, the document. You can download it for free, of course. This is the SOP. Hope you can, uh, you can see my screen. Wait. Just a second. Yeah, this is the standard operating procedures uh, that is available online in English and Arabic. We are working in translating it in the other languages as well. Uh, as you can see, all the procedures, all the steps of the procedures are reported here. And the introduction as well, all the field application, it is clearly um, all, this, all the um, instruments are clearly listed here. Uh, some notes on authenticity as well how to prepare the samples, the procedures, the calculation, and all the references are here. 
So you can refer to this document uh, if you have further questions on the references. I just put the link in the chat. There are some other questions. I will I can ask um, uh, Maya, Mahal, or Riam to answer them in the chat. Um, how about saline sodic soils? Where filtration is shocked with dispersed clay? How to determine electrical conductivity of such specialized soils? This question is from Shabir. I don't know if you would like to ask this question to someone in particular. Otherwise, Manal, Riam, or Maya, you can can you you can unmute. Maybe Maya, you want to start? Uh, <clears throat> I would prefer the Riham answer. Yeah, I can Riham. say, but any Riham, can you um, say your experience uh, when dispersed clay is in question? Yes, Professor. That's why we, when we uh, were talking about soil samples and the information we need to know about it, it's very important because in saline and sodic soils, we may need a, a higher a soil amount to, to get only a small portion or a small amount of, uh, of soil extract and would be a difficult actually a procedure to be done. That's why in this type of soils, I may prefer to, to use the uh, soil extract, but uh, I need to, to make a further studies for the, the region and the soil type I'm dealing with. Um, for example, some new researchers that try to use a, an antiquate soil samples to find some kind of uh, a line or relationship between the EC, for example, from saturated base and the EC from a soil extract, uh, one to five or one to 10. Uh, so uh, I can work maybe for a, an adequate number of soil samples, try to find a some kind of equation or a line or relationship, and then I can apply the soil extract uh, method and convert my numbers. Uh, but it's, uh, as we mentioned before, it's a difficult procedure in this set uh, soil types in this uh, soil conditions. Um, the only thing that I can do is to uh, make a larger uh, amount of soil as saturated based and it may take uh, to one hour to, to get the, the soil extract in this, uh, in this condition. Thanks, Riam. I don't know if Maya want to add something to yes, this answer. Uh, maybe it's also important to uh, make an additional filtration of the extract before using for the other analysis. It's maybe not be important, so important for the EC uh, determination, but for uh, determination of other uh, ions, uh, maybe it's uh, maybe important. I found uh, also, on, also one more question interesting. Can I assess dissolved organic matter content with this method from the extract? Of course, you can use, if you get a clear extract, you can use it for as many <laughs> um, analyses that you want or can do in your lab. So there's no limit for that. Uh, but it's a particular method is uh, focused or de uh, devoted to soil salinity assessment. So, uh, I can uh, uh, <laughs> follow the all these uh, uh, questions. So I would uh, like yeah. to... Uh, Manal, do you want that yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we get the question. That's the question is, uh, can we uh, determine the organic uh, matter in these methods? The answer, no, we cannot yep. do that. We can uh, do, we can uh, determine the organic matter uh, or organic carbon by other ways, by uh, potassium dichromate methods. I think that's the answer. I see there are two hands up. From participants. Depends of the instruments you have available in your lab. So, if you have instruments, instrumental techniques available, oh, then you so can so use so any of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, if you look, many. there is a question also about the, the importance of uh, leaving the saturated base setting for several hours. As we mentioned, uh, at minimum, it's four hours. And at maximum, it's uh, 24 hours. Um, the recent researchers um, uh, prefer to leave it for at least 16 hours, so we can give an adequate time to monovalent and divalent 
to uh, move from the uh, soil, uh, the soil particle surface uh, toward the soil extract. And so I can make an accurate estimation of their content and concentration in the, in the soil extract. It's very important to give that enough time so I can get uh, accurate measurements. Um, if mm -hmm. I take the, the soil extract um, very early, I may uh, have uh, some numbers, but it won't be as accurate as the, the, the perfect and the real situation of the soil sample I'm working on. Thanks, thanks Riam. I will now uh, like to give the floor to the people who will raise their hand. Uh, I see this is Frank uh, Mabagala. Can you unmute? So if you want to raise a question. Frank Mabagala. Hello. Hello, sir. Where are you from? Uh, I'm Frankie Mabadara from uh, Tanzania. I'm here okay. with my colleagues. Actually, uh, I had a question, but uh, it has already been asked. So I really uh, congratulate you for this uh, presentation. And uh, I encourage you to continue supporting us in uh, different ways. Uh, you are welcome in Tanzania. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, therefore, I will give the floor to Awudu Abu Bakari. I see he has a hands up. Can you unmute yourself, Awudu? Yes. Good morning, good morning. afternoon, and evening, everyone, wherever you may be. Riham, thanks uh, for your nice presentation. Thank you. Yes. I just uh, have a small it's a It's a teamwork, actually. <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. I want to make a clarification with regards to the ions being measured in the saturated paste extract. That is your, your calcium ion, sodium ion, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and the others. They are, they are just a soluble source and therefore cannot replace exchangeable cations. This source is precipitates in solution and they are not easily precipitates after evaporation and they cannot replace uh, minerals in exchangeable, uh, what do you call it, as exchangeable ions. Therefore, measurement of this cannot replace uh, ammonium acetate, let's say ammonium acetate exchangeable cations, which are minerals. So that is the clarification, and thank you. Uh, actually, I didn't hear you very clear. Can Philip repeat the question, please? Yeah, yes, I don't know. I, said, can you, I yeah. said, yes, I said we are talking about in one part of the slide, I saw uh, minerals. These minerals can be measured. Yes, yes, from the soil extract itself. Yes, uh -huh. but those are not minerals. They are only soluble salts. Mm. The yeah, ions we... are not minerals. They are yes. soluble salt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, I minerals, can... uh -huh, the minerals are exchangeable cations. Those yes. are the exchange sites. Uh -huh. So yes. those we measured cannot replace. As minerals, uh -huh. they are only salts. Yeah, you. Dico, like you, uh, as we mentioned in the principles of this process, it's mainly uh, done because of the EC and pH, and it has a main aims of this procedure. But, an, uh, but add, uh, uh, as an added value, I can also estimate the concentration of monovalent and divalent, which the cautions and onions. That's nice. uh, that's the ones you you mentioned, yes. right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. But I can I can use the same soil extract because uh, if you remember from the very uh, early slides of this training presentation, uh, we mentioned that conducting a saturation the saturated soil base, we are trying to uh, to reincarnate the, the saturation condition that actually happened within the soil profile around the the the, the, the root system. We are trying yes. to, to get as real as possible the same conditions yes. and uh, uh, concentration of this monovalent and divalent uh, uh, within that um, uh, effective area, you know? Of course, you can conduct all the, the other methods in your lab and maybe, uh, as we mentioned, uh, maybe give you a more accurate uh, concentrations, you know? But uh, if you are going to do this um, labor time, effort consuming process, 
and you can get a uh, good estimation of this concentration, you can conduct them. And as we mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, uh, for the situation of uh, saline and sodic soils, uh, a lot of us as researchers try to find out some comparison between methods and try to, to choose with, uh, within the, uh, from them, which is more suitable to the region or the soil type you are working on. It's not a, there's not only one method for all soil types or so all soil conditions. You need to judge what to choose according to the conditions you are working on, but it's a very common, a very accurate uh, method yeah, that you need to, to try it in your lab and uh, try to find some uh, relationships uh, between this, uh, the numbers you got from this method and the numbers you got from other methods and try to find out which is more accurate and which to use in, the, in your previous research. Thank you, thank you. Thank but you. what happens is, no, uh, thank you too, but what happens is, once you use the saturated piece extract, once you use yes. it, then you can't even compare to ammonium acetate extract of worker tiles because you are dealing with different species. Actually, it's a different kind of analysis by using uh -huh. the amino so, acetate, so you, you know, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a different what? principle, you know, uh -huh. it's not an water extract, it's not a, a soil water extract, uh -huh. you are here adding some extract cautions, you are trying to replace caution with another, it's another thing to talk about, so it's according to what you are trying to do, to what you are trying to study, you need to choose the best method. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for your answer, Jan. Um, I, I just uh, wrote down a few more questions from the chat. I will try to read them. Uh, they're asking, can we use positive pressure extraction method instead of vacuum extraction for obtaining the past extract? How both methods do or could affect extract volume? I think Maya already answered a little bit on this, but maybe you can go further in details with that. About... Um, positive pressure extraction method instead of the vacuum one? Oh, yes. Yes, it's possible to, uh, I think it's possible to use any method uh, by which uh, you can get the extract, the equipment you have available. Okay, so there is no, no problem in Fine. that. I, Another question was about uh, sandy soils. So they say in sandy soil, saturated paste, usually water floats at surface, confusing if the paste is oversaturated. But this is not the case. Um, so how to confirm saturated paste of sandy soil is ready for extraction? Yes, we, we should make sure about this point because there is differences between the sandy soils and clay soils. But uh, I think it's very important we don't to use uh, the, this uh, saturated paste in this way. Not uh, the extra is 1.5. Yeah, I, I actually also want to add something about the um, soils with coarse texture, Philippe, uh, because as from the physical, a soil physical point, uh, the, the water we are adding to the soil samples, we are trying to help it to enter the, the soil porous, uh, as we mentioned, the porous and the spaces uh, between the soil particles and the soil aggregates. Uh, as we all know as soil scientists that the, 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 this porous uh, or this space in uh, coarse and sandy soils is a small in compared with the clay uh, soils. That's maybe we need to be very accurate dealing with this type of soils because only less amount of water should be added. Uh, and I need to uh, to mix as possible as I can and recheck the soil sample as we mentioned before and to add only small portions of water. So to get an adequate soil extract, I uh, may need to use a bigger amount, uh, a bigger mass of, of soil sample to get an enough soil extract. And I need to be more accurate, more precise in the, in the uh, added portions of distilled water. It's only a, a small space that I'm dealing with. So it's, um, as we mentioned, that after a time, after repeating this procedure in the lab for 100 times or maybe for 1,000 times, you will have that inner feeling and that sense when to stop, what to add, and what to do. That's why it's very, a, as Professor mentioned in the first, that uh, it's um, simple, 
yet it needed to be uh, trained on conducting this uh, this kind of procedure. So after a while, you will find some solutions to, the, to your soil types according to the conditions you are dealing with. But uh, in sandy soils and coarse soils, you are a, you should be very careful because only small amount of water is needed to be added. Thanks, thanks, Riam, for your clarification. I would like to invite um, to reiterate the invitation from Maya to all colleagues to please share the, the experience from your lab. So in case you face particular problems or, or you found out um, different ways to tackle the problems of, for instance, uh, course texture, please share your, your experience. Uh, I see an answer from Mozia Memon. Mozia, can you unmute yourself so we can hear your question? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Good morning. I have a question to uh, the last presenter, uh, Madam, about the soil uh, pest extract. Whether uh, I'm uh, working with the salinity and sodic city field, so uh, I actually fastened the problem in the sodic soils while uh, while the preparing saturated extract. It was really very difficult to find the feed condition as we prepare the saturated extract and uh, uh, the final position as it must be shine and the, the, the water on the top uh, uh, become as uh, well, well, uh, shiny and luster. But in the product files, I don't know why we did, did not find in the last uh, few samples. So please, could you tell what uh, mistakes we did there or any other chemistry behind this? I'm not sure I got the whole uh, question. I'm gonna answer the, the part I got. Um, when, as we mentioned, uh, when we uh, are dealing with the saline and sodic soils, it's a, a very um, special case. Uh, as you know, that this salinity will cause a differentiation and changes in the uh, in the soil um, profile, for example, it increases the the, uh, the dispersion ability of the soil. That's why uh, Professor Maria mentioned that you need maybe sometimes to uh, to to be the the filtration uh, process. Uh, the extraction process will consume more than one hour because uh, the the soil the the water will be a difficulty. Uh, there is a a great difficulty in moving or in removing the, the soil, uh, uh, the, the added water from the, the saturated base. So it will consume more uh, time according to other soil types. And uh, if you didn't find the same uh, characteristics we were talking about in the uh, perfect saturated uh, soil based, it may uh, correlate it to the soil type you are working on. Uh, we mentioned that it's the, the ideal condition, uh, it's the optimum condition, but it's not the, the, um, the, oh, the um, what can I say? You may find something different. That's why I mentioned that if you are working in the lab and you will see um, something different from the mixture we show in this training, it's not and necessarily wrong. It may relate it to the to the condition of the of your uh, of your soil type. So, but uh, you need to be to follow the orders of this SOB, and try to uh, maybe to let other experts from your lab to recheck the procedure. Uh, as I think you are a researcher, so yeah. uh, you may can ask uh, the help from the experts in your lab, or maybe. You can send us some pictures and we can, we are uh, very glad to, to help you in this. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I, I may have your uh, email address. Yes, here. for sure. Yeah, I'm going to share it in the chat. Yeah, indeed. Uh, like if Ria, Manal, or uh, Maya will uh, feel comfortable I'm with that, one, I invite uh, you to share your email address in the chat. Filippo? I may yes, ask. Please. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Ram uh, Zalen, uh, I have a next question uh, with you that. There is any procedure that uh, we can conduct this test uh, in the field live, live rather than uh, having the sample in the uh, uh, laboratory. We can no. build down prepare the saturated pest there in the field manually. 
Actually, as we mentioned, we are trying to reincarnate the, the, the field situation. But actually, mm -hmm. it's for me at least, uh, it's difficult to conduct this procedure at field. You need, it's a, it's a lab procedure. Uh, and some, uh, we are actually uh, trying to, uh, to escape from field working to the lab working because it's easier. <laughs> it's uh, at least not under the hot sun. So uh, it's more easy to conduct it in the, in the lab. We, you can measure uh, other measurements uh, in, were included in this procedure like the, the EC or the BH by using these apparatus, the field apparatus of this, um, uh, especially for these uh, measurements, the, the, the electrical conductivity meter, the field, the field one or the mm -hmm. BH, the field one as well, but uh, it's better to uh, to do it at lab. So you, it will be more precise, more accurate. And as we mentioned, you can get an extra addition or, or added values by measuring the, uh, the quotient, the onions we mentioned. So uh, it will be better for you. Uh, yes, uh, you are right that uh, we will uh, accurately find the good result in the laboratory, but yes. I mean, that if we are working in the field uh, far away from the field, um, uh, we need to teach the communities as well, the local communities, the practitioners we call farmers. And we work with them to re realize as I worked with them on the soil profile, that how horizon and other things are uh, uh, professionally being a soil scientist there. So I'm looking for such condition that I could done these kind of the things without sanction. We can perform, uh, even we can try, it's not scientifically proved or anything else, but we can uh, compare the things. One yeah, sample actually, I, I got your idea because we are also dealing with farmers. We want to benefit them and give them as much inform information as we, we can to, to make the, the scientific issues more close to the um, field application. Uh, in this way, for me, I prefer to uh, give them a, some an extra information and to teach them how to measure the the soil moisture by by feel by the, the soil texture. Because um, if you remember uh, in this, uh, the first uh, in the beginning of this uh, training, we said that uh, this saturated base is uh, equal yeah, to yeah. the uh, saturation uh, mm -hmm. conditions. Of the, yes. of the soil profile. So you can uh, give them uh, information about how to, to measure the, the moisture content by feel maybe at the field. And after that, give them an additional information. But it's really hard to, to, to teach them the, this procedure because it's, um, it won't be uh, that important uh, and compare with the uh, other information they may need to, to apply their uh, agricultural services. Yeah, I am, I am uh, because uh, we all are uh, working inside the field as well in the universities and then with the farmers. And directly, we actually all are working for benefiting the farmers, the communities. So if we could do, uh, I, I will uh, share you with this idea, come up with this idea that how can we deal the things at the field uh, lively with the farmers. Yes, you are so welcome to send me. I send you my email, and as well as I have those information about the 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 field, the measurement by field uh, for the soil moisture, and we can uh, share this uh, information with you. Um, it's very important to to transport um, our results to the um, field of application to the farmers, which the the endpoint uh, the endpoint of our work. <clears throat> Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> So please, uh, if you feel comfortable with that, Maya, Riam, and Manal, please share your email address in the chat. So if they want for us to contact you for any questions, okay. uh, they may be able to do that. Um, yeah. I'm having a look at the chat to see if there are any more questions. Um, yeah, there, there is a question, Filippo. There is yes, a question, uh, a suggestion from uh, the participant that uh, we do a factor between uh, 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 saturated paste and uh, the extract 1.5. And my answer, we try to do that in Syria, but uh, 
uh, we cannot uh, succeed in this point because um, it's not accurate. We, we compare between them, but it's not accurate. It's up to us here in our labs. I don't know the other labs what the situation. I know that there were many attempts to, to make a correlation between uh, one per uh, five and uh, saturated paste, but it, I also tried this in a trial maybe some 15 years ago, but we couldn't find any, any relation, so we gave up. Uh, we regularly measure uh, both, uh, both values, so saturated paste and um, uh, extracting uh, uh, get from uh, uh, the soil paste ratio one per five. I, I would like just to uh, shortly to go to the, the question of uh, here, Luftar Yaman. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a simple question. Have you established any correlation among soil EC, soil texture and soil organic matter? So that's the question of the uh, basically soil, soil size, soil characteristics. So it's very difficult to make relations because each of these uh, uh, soil properties are uh, particular, are, um, are characteristics of the soil and cannot get in any relation if you have not an additional uh, inputs such as uh, saline water irrigation or something uh, something different. So there's there's no way to make and correlate establish a fixed correlation between or among these three uh, soil properties. That's uh, my opinion. So maybe Riham uh, and Mahal can contribute here. here. Actually, uh, conducting uh, such a kind of relationship uh, will uh, need a huge amount, a massive number of soil samples. So we can get a, a very accurate uh, relationship between, uh, between two of them. But uh, it's uh, only a site specific, so it may differ from one region to another. Uh, it's maybe uh, could be applied for a, a specific region or a specific research, but we can do a, a, a common relation that we can say this is the relation between a soil EC and soil texture or soil organic matter. You need to conduct such, such kind of relations, especially for your research, for your region, and by using large amounts and large numbers of soil samples. That's uh, only the, the yeah, only or way to get use, different rates. land use or something. Yes, and actually that's why if you uh, notice that um, EC from saturated base is more accurate and more high and higher than the EC we may get from the soil extract one to five or one to, to ten. Uh, you, can mention, you can see that clearly if you go back to the classification of soil salinity you will find that the upper limit of uh, soil salinity which we uh, refer to high uh, level of soil salinity uh, up to 16 decisimens per meter, while it's only six for the, the soil uh, extract 1.5, uh, 1 to 5. So um, I prefer to use saturated based as much as possible, although it's an effort and time consuming, but it's uh, more accurate. If you couldn't, you can make uh, the relationship we were talking about to your study area to your research, uh, but you can say that it's a common relationship uh, that av available for all uh, situations and all regions. Thanks, thanks a lot. See you in the look at the chat. Uh, really encourage again all participants to raise your hands if you're right in the chat, if you want to share your experience or if you have any other question to the guest speakers for today. Yeah, actually, Filippo, I wanted to encourage our colleagues in this training session to join us in the Arabic session in, uh, on 21. Uh, we also want to mention, because it's a related issue also, to join us uh, on the training session of the electrical conductivity uh, by the next month, I guess. So we can um, discuss the, these informations and uh, their topics maybe uh, more deep and in detail.
let me let me write in the chat the link to register to both events so we will now put in the chat the link to register to the arabic training the training on saturday soil pace that will be implemented in arabic that will be 21 of november uh, while the one on um, we will have another meeting on this topic on uh, electrical conductivity and that will take place indeed on 14 of december so we'll put the link to register both of them to the chat. So participants, I will encourage you to register to both events. Uh, I don't know if there are any, any more questions. There, uh, there, are, there are some questions again on the transfer function to relate electrical conductivity and solid soil paste extract, but I think these have already been answered. Mm, yes, actually, there are several sessions about this um, a correction factor between these two uh, values, but as we mentioned, it's only a valid for specific regions. So if you find some uh, other soil scientists who work on the same soil type with the same conditions, I think it's good to, to use that factor, but um, I prefer to recheck it before using it in new results. Well, um, I don't know if there are any more questions from participants. You can both write in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, there's a question um, from Meizam uh, Redzei. The question about the cell salinity um, that plant is experienced compared to SSP. I don't know if uh, some of you want to answer on this, but again, I think we are all people from the labs here. I don't know if there is someone working in the field with plant. Uh, I couldn't know. find the question, Filippo. What was the question? From uh, I have a question regarded. In the meantime, while you're in the, reading the question, I will give the floor to Sunny Bilia. I see he has the... The, there is a hands up from Sunny. Sunny, can you unmute? Sunny? Sunny Bilia? Otherwise, there's another question in the chat from Uzbekistan. They're asking uh, if you can approximately estimate the cost of one side sample? Uh, yes, Philip, can I answer? In Syria, the cost of this sample uh, is semi-free for farmers. Uh, so the farmers uh, don't, uh, don't uh, give uh, us, the government, any fees about that. Uh, but uh, I determine uh, that the cost, uh, the, uh, factually, a, a cost about um, $10, $20. And if I can, I would like to share my screen once again, because I, I would like to show you something. As you can see, this is the Glossolam website. I hope you, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes, 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 this is the Glossolam website. If you, yeah, the, all the information about the network are reported, the meetings, the material, and you can see we are working on different topics. So if you go on soil analysis here, you can have a look to the standard operating procedures that Glossolam harmonize so far. They are organized into topics. So if you click on uh, soil chemical analysis, you can find, for instance, here electrical conductivity. And from here, you can download the, the text of the SAP. So the one on the base that I'm showing you, the one that was based for this training. As well, as you can see here, we collect some information on this topic as well. So the, the sustainability of the method, so the risk for human health, for the disposal of the reagents, and the technology that is required, that is low for solid pace, as we know. 
but also we collect information on the time that is available, that is needed, sorry, to perform this analysis. So it's about half working day. Uh, we collect information from all over the world to estimate the global median price of the analysis. So normally uh, customers pay this analysis for dollars. This is the price for the customers. It's not the price, the cost of the instruments and, and the reagent involved in the, in the, in the, in the analysis. This is just the price, the global median price. Of course, this price can change from country to country, from region to region. And this is the cost for customers, not the actual cost for the lab. Uh, I want also to show you, uh, for instance, what, uh, how this SOPs will look like soon, because we are working on training videos and we will make one for satellite space as well. So for instance, this is the page on uh, the SOPs on carbon measurement. And if you see here on organic carbon, we have uh, an SOP on work climb back method. And you can even click here on the video. If you are interested, for instance, in the titration method, you can click the link and you will see there is a training here. The same video will be made for the, uh, for the SOP on cellular space. So you can see here, you find a video with all the procedures you, you reported. You can select uh, the language you prefer for the subtitles. You can have in French, in English, in Spanish, Arabic, and so. And you can follow the video very nicely and very clearly. This, the same, will be made soon for the um, SOP on saturated soil paste extract. So please consult the Glossolan website. All the information are reported there. We really update the website in order to upload all the material, our training SOPs, and meetings there. Now we see an ends up from Kale Mullah Kobar. Hello, sir. Uh, my question from saturated soil. Sir, why we prepare saturated paste? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, sir. I have a question from saturated soil, sir. Sir, why we prepare saturated paste? Soil saturated paste. Why we prepare soil saturated paste? The aim of the procedure. No, no, he said, why? Why we do that? The, the aim of to the determine, procedure. To determine the salinity, EC, other cations, anions. I think that's the answer. What, uh, no. what about you, Reham? Yes. As we said uh, in the, uh, for the beginning of this presentation, and the professor Maria um, make it clear that we are trying to conduct a saturated base to. Um, bring the same conditions, the system routes, facing and living from so, uh, from field to, to lab to get as much information about the, the conditions of the field and measure it in the lab. So it's uh, just a, a reincarnation about the, 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 sit, the, the saturation condition of the soil profile by using a, a sample within the lab. So it's uh, something to, to predict something more, um, as much as accurate to understand the conditions of the field. So you can measure EC, BH, um, old cautions and onions. It's very beneficial. Abudu, do you have another Flip? question? Yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh... He asked a question that why do we uh, have to prepare the saturated paste? And the, the objective of that is to mimic the water content of the root zone or the rhizosphere. Because if you do one is to five, there's dilution effect. You dilute yes. your, uh, you dilute your, your soluble salt. The values you get may be smaller than what is actually in the root zone. So we try to mimic the, 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 the root zone uh, soft content, what is actually yeah. there. That is why that, you prepare the piece. That's right, indeed. And that's Thank why you. we said that the, the uh, values you got uh, or you obtained from uh, this, uh, this method would be higher than the, the same values yes. you obtained from, you the, from the soil extract by using yes. 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the Avudu for raising this point. 
Um, is there any other question? From the chat, you can write in the chat, you can raise your hand, you can give the floor. We're really interested in, in know more about how the procedure is implemented in your lab, in your region, in your country, if there are differences of the procedures, if you adapt them to there's the different type uh, you're facing with. There's a question. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, do you compare between the two, the, the two methods between uh, the extracts and uh, the saturated based disks? Uh, we do that, uh, previously we do that in the past. There is uh, differences between uh, the uh, two methods. Yeah, actually, uh, if you save the serve the net, you're gonna find plenty of references which tried this also before in different regions of the world. And I got some of them. Um, there were uh, there was um, a, a reference, for example, that gave that line of relationship between the, these two values, <laughs> with the um, uh, values of a factor between the EC from the saturated base and the soil extract. But as we said. Um, it's something so special and so specific to the region you are working on, to your area of study. So I prefer to not to use um, a fixed uh, factors from references. Do your own factors, uh, which is more suitable and more accurate to your, kind, to your area of study, to your um, to the study area you are working on. Um, Repeat the, the process. It's very easy. You can take the measurements from the, uh, the uh, for EC from the saturated base. Uh, try with the same soil samples uh, with, uh, with soil extract, for example, one to, to five, and try to, to put these numbers together and find the, the relationship between these two values. It's better for you and it's more accurate. Yes, there is, I think, question. In the chat, there is a question that I said that's why pH not determined by this by, by this method. No, no, we, we determine this pH by this method. Uh, this is the answer. Uh, we determine pH, EC, and cations and anions. And uh, I has mentioned the other elements uh, in this method, uh, saturated paste. Actually, Dr. Menhol, it should be, uh, I refer to that uh, during uh, describing the, the procedure that we can measure the pH by immersing the pH probe yeah. directly into the saturated base, not in the, the extract we obtained yeah. after the extraction. It's very yeah. important. Not in the extract. Yes, yeah, that's right. directly to the saturated base. Yeah. That's right. Yes. I see there's another hands up from Sunny. Sunny, can you unmute this yourself? <coughs> Sunny Bilia. Sunny. Let's see if it this time is available. Sunny. Hello good, Hello, good afternoon, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? Fine. Fine thanks. So I have a question. My question goes like this. Uh, what is an accurate ratio for measuring EC in both alkaline and Alkaline soil and acidic soil. Repeat, please. An accurate <laughs> procedure. What is the ratio? What is the standard ratio for measuring <laughs> and acidic soil? Yeah, do you get the, the question? Yeah, I think he, he was asking about the classification of the values we obtained from this result. Uh, there are a, a, a references. For uh, for the classes, then I mean the actual the ratio. What is the standard ratio for measuring EC? Ratio between one, was water and soil, or what? You said uh, uh, ratio between what uh, soil and ratio, water, or what? What is the ratio? What, what ratio? At what ratio can we measure the EC? That is electrical conductivity in an alkaline soil. There is no, no ratio. Yeah, yeah. If you mean if you if, if you mean the extract uh, one to uh, five, that's yeah. one so one soil to five water. If if you mean that this point. Yes, 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 yes. That that is what I mean. But I mean yeah, yeah, alkaline yeah. soil. Alkaline. The same for extract uh, one gram soil to five milliwater uh, water fed water. 
if you mean okay. about the extract. Okay. Okay, you mean one ratio five? Is this, is this, do you mean one ratio of five? We should measure the one ratio of, uh, that is mean uh, like 10 gram of, uh, of soil and 50 mil of water. Mm. That is one ratio, one to five. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Okay, is that what you mean, sir? Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we should uh, divide it between the two, two middles. The first of all, the saturated based. Uh, uh, we have no ratio between them, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Reham mentioned. There is a middle for prepared saturated paste, but the other for extract. For extract, uh, we need uh, soil and water, distilled water, uh, 10 gram uh, soil uh, to uh, 50 uh, gram uh, milli uh, for distilled water. This is the ratio between them and the differences between the, the two middles. But uh, the, the results not okay. accurate between them. There's differences in the, the results uh, up to the, the, the region, to lab, to, lab, to, uh, to the, the person. There is differences between uh, the two methods. There, okay. are two there are two different methods. One is saturated soil paste, that, that yeah. is one discussing today. And another one is electrical conductivity one to five that will be presented on 14 of December. So Sunny, I will invite you to rejoin the next webinar on that, on electrical conductivity, and uh, where we can more investigate more and discuss more about the different soil types and different ratio that can be uh, adopted. Okay, okay, sir, okay, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank you very much. Thank you. I will write in the chat some reference both to the trainings and to the material. So you can find in the chat now the link to. Avudu, you have your hands up once again. You want to say something? Please unmute. Yeah. Yes, Reham. I saw that the saturated paste was prepared in a porcelain bowl. Please, were you able to transfer everything? How were you able to transfer everything to the partner funnel? Thank you, Mr. Where are you? Where are you, huh? Reham. Maybe she leave. Because the Maybe connection. Problem. Yeah, it's a problem with the connection and the internet. Huh. I think that. Yeah. yeah, we can, we can wait a few seconds to come back. Okay. Yeah, she tried that now to come back. Yeah. I don't know if Maya has, a, has, a, has an answer on that. Wait, you are, you're on mute, huh, Maya. We are mute, we cannot hear you. Maja, you are muted. Mute. Okay, I'm muted. Uh, oh, oh, I, I didn't, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Can you repeat it, please? Yes, I said that I saw Reham prepared the saturated paste yeah. in a porcelain bowl. How was she able to transfer everything into the Batna funnel? How? Was the paste transferred to the Batna funnel? I'm not sure. The extraction, the extraction I... is done in a vacuum pump. You use the vacuum pump. You yes, have your yeah. bachelor funnel. Yeah, we and use vacuum pump. In it. Yes. Yeah. But it was prepared in the bowl. The, the, the mixer, the paste was prepared in the bowl. So how was it transferred to the bachelor funnel, making sure that nothing was left in the bowl? I Philip, I don't know whether you get imagine. you. Imagine. Yeah. Maybe you can write in the chat and while well, uh, we wait for Riam to come back. You can write yes. in the chat so we are clearly- you, we, we do that by hand, by hand to transfer. Okay. Uh, the okay. Paste by hand. So yes. use your hand. Our lab by hand. Yeah, by yes. hand, but not, by, not uh, mechanical, by hand. Okay, by hand. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, is there any other question? No, no, please. Thank you. 
thanks. Sunny, you have another question? Sunny Bilia, you have another question or no? I see okay, you, Sunny. okay, no, was a mistake. Uh, Take sure you is it like an applause or you want to raise your raise a question? Right. Sorry. Uh, this is due to the concern raised by the previous speaker. We are saying the mixing of the soil starts off in a porcelain bowl, but then it is transferred. But it's not important that everything is transferred now from the porcelain ball to the Buckner funnel. The most important thing is that has equilibrium been established? Once the equilibrium has been established in the soil, even if something is left, you know, slightly in the bowel, it doesn't matter because the equilibrium has been reached between the sad paste and the like. So the, vac the, the, the vacuum filtration will still proceed without any bias. Thank you, I think. Thank you, yes, thank you. Thank I you. agree. That, that, that is, yes, that is nice explanation. Very nice explanation, thank you. Thanks, thanks, take sure. Thank you. Is there any more question from the chat or from the participants? Please let us know. Otherwise, uh, I will invite you once again to, for the people from the, uh, who speak, to speak uh, Arabic, to join the session on the 21st of November. We will have uh, the same training of today, yeah, just in Arabic. Um, while on the 14th of December, we will have a training session on electrical conductivity. So strongly linked with this training, you can uh, invite you to join that session as well. Other training session have been implemented and another organization for of the network, you can find uh, this link that I put in now in the chat all the information, the link to register and all the material of this training and of all the other trainings will be uploaded there. So I really encourage you to, to check this website. And um, if there's no more question here, I don't know if uh, Riam Saxin reconnected uh, because I would like to to thank I her as well. Riam apologize because uh, She's a problem, uh, she, uh, yeah, she she out of electricity now and no, no is uh, earlier okay, because so of please, that uh, she has no net. So please share uh, our thank. I, to I her. connect with her by mobile. She okay. Said that. Okay. I would like to thank once again uh, Manhal, Riham, thank and you. Maya for their kind um, organization of today training for your kind availability to to give these trainings to answer the questions. I invite participants to contact them. They wrote the email address in the chat. Thank you once again. And um, I look forward to meet you all in the next training of the of the um, of the of the Glossolan network. And as you know, we have many topics ahead. We have we will have the training on uh, organic carbon via work claim back uh, next week. Then we have a whole send method for soluble phosphorus. We will have um, the, the training on electrical conductivity. So please check out our website. All the information will be displayed there. Thank you once again. And um, have, a nice, there is, have a nice day or evening, depending where you are. And thank you once again for your participation. Thanks again, eh? Maya, Manhal. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Filippo. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Filippo. Thank, thank, thank you all Maja. for the active Thank you for all. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Love this.